Hello, everybody. So today's case, I feel like is fairly well known. It is the case of Sage Smith. And I just want to say very quickly that Sage is a trans woman. And I'm not going to be using her dead name in this video. Now, I know that some of her family still uses it, even though they like said that they've acknowledged her as being a woman. They still, like, for whatever reason, use her dead name. I feel like that's still very disrespectful. Um, I'm going to tell you what it is in the beginning because on a lot of posters and stuff, it's you'll see, like, Sage Smith, also known as, or something like that. So I'll tell you what it is when we start the video, but I will not continue using it. Um, no hate towards the family. I'm sure that's what they've known her as basically her entire life. It's just that I feel like that's incredibly disrespectful, and if Sage is what she chose, that is what I'm going to call her. But with that being said, um, let's go ahead and get into this video. All the links that I used for research will be down below, like always. So Sage was born as Deshaud Smith, um, and like I said, after this I will not be using that name. And she always knew who she truly was, but she struggled with the acceptance of it. When she finally came out as trans when she was a teenager, some of her family members were slow to accept that, but they did eventually come around. She had a tough time for a while, but she lived with her mom for a bit since her parents were divorced, and then she would go live with her grandma, and her and her grandma became very close. But at some point, she went to go live back with her mom, and for unknown reasons, she would eventually end up in, a, in the foster care system. In June 2011, she became the first in her family to graduate high school. In March 2012, she moved into her own apartment and she was taking classes to fulfill her dream of becoming a professional hairdresser. But unfortunately, Sage would eventually vanish. In November of 2012, November 19th exactly, 19-year-old Sage and her roommates held a get-together at their apartment. She had a disagreement with one of her roommates and the roommate agreed to leave for a few days. On November 20th, 2012, she was excited to spend Thanksgiving with her family, and she called her dad and asked for some money. Later that day, she told one of, one of her roommates that she had a date and would be going out. The next morning, on November 21st, she wasn't at the apartment, and her roommate called her several times, but the phone went straight to voicemail. The roommate called Sage's grandma, Lita, who then called her dad, Dean, and they decided that Sage would likely be at Thanksgiving dinner, but she would never show up, and that's when they kind of knew that something was wrong. Because she had been so excited for it, why would she just not show up to her family's dinner? You know what I'm saying? And Sage would be reported missing that same day on Thanksgiving Day. One of her stepsisters actually saw Sage, saw Sage, I don't know why I said Sage, stepsisters saw Sage, on the evening of November 20th, around 6.30 p.m. in the 500 block of West Main Street. Sage had been on her phone, and she had been t speaking to someone, and they kind of heard like a snippet of the conversation, and she heard Sage say that she would be there in 10 minutes. So, her family traced her cell phone records, and they discovered the last number she had contact with was in an out-of-state number that belonged to a man named Eric McFadden. So they posted that number on Facebook asking for the for help and someone identified it as Eric's and that's eventually how they realized that's who it was. So just before her sister actually saw her that evening, Sage would receive free texts from Eric between 6 to 8 p.m. and 6 27 p.m. accusing her of standing him up. After this call, Sage made her way to the 400 block of West Main Street in Charlottesville, Virginia. There, she spoke with a witness and mentioned she was going to meet someone at the Amtrak station. And it's possible that she did go to the Wild Week Cafe while she was doing this, next to the Amtrak around 7 p.m., but that uh, remains unconfirmed. That evening that Sage is discovered missing, Eric reached out to Yanni Ortiz, who is a mutual acquaintance of his and Sage, and he told her to delete his contact information from her cell phone. And Yanni is the girl who identified Eric's phone number on Facebook for the family. So he finds out that she identified his phone number, and he's like, hey, delete my shit off your phone. 
So, you're probably wondering more about Eric and his connection with Sage. They actually met online, and they had been talking for a while. Eric at the time was 21 years old, and he did have a girlfriend, but the two of them would re- would regularly meet in person, and it's reported that he allegedly paid Sage to keep their secret from his girlfriend. Now, I want to say some articles state that as a fact, like, yes, he paid her um, to keep it a secret. That's why Sage didn't speak up or anything. But I feel kind of weird just being like, yeah, he absolutely did this. So I want to say allegedly he paid Sage to keep their secret from his girlfriend. So just putting that out there. On November 25th, 2012, Eric called his girlfriend and told her he was in Washington, D.C. and asked for some money. She told him that the police wanted to speak with him. On November 27th, he contacted police and told them that he was in New York. He admitted to having a relationship with Sage and admitted that they were supposed to meet on November 20th, but said that Sage never made it. He asked, uh, or he agreed to come back to Charlottesville for questioning, but then no one ever saw or heard from him again. And his family would report him missing in 2019. And I think we're all getting the idea of what's what what's going on with him. He is suspicious, at least in my opinion, right from the start, you know. He's accusing her of, like, you're standing me up, where are you? And, like, to me, I mean, you have the right to be mad at someone if you guys have a plan and then they just don't show up and they're just, like, not contacting you. But in a way, it's also kind of creepy because, like, they don't have to meet you. So he's, like, it felt a little aggressive to me, like, accusing her of all this and then, like, I would assume she's the one who, she was on the phone with him saying, like, I'll be there in 10 minutes. Like, it just, it gives me a weird vibe. He gives me a weird vibe. So, Sage's case was initially a missing persons, but it would be reclassified to a homicide a few years later. And I just want to say that, although it has been reclassified to a homicide, um, her body has not been found. Um, There have been no remains. I don't know if it's because she's been gone so long and they're just kind of like, it's. it would make more sense that she is or she has been murdered, there's been foul play, or if they just know something that they're not putting out there. But her body has not been found and Eric to this day has not been found. Um, with that being said, there is a $20,000 reward uh, for any information that can, you know, lead to an arrest, her body, all that stuff. So with that being said, that is all I actually have for you on Sage's case. Now, I know if you've seen this case, I don't know why it took me so long to say that word. If you've seen this case before, you've probably seen videos that are much longer than this. I just wanted to keep it to like the bare bones of the case. Um, I know that Kendall Ray, she did a really good video on it. I want to say it was at least two, three years ago with much more information, um, I think has more like family stuff in it. Um, but I wanted to keep this to like the facts that we know in this case. But obviously I will continue to update you on Sage's case, uh, should they find a body or they find her alive, which would be absolutely amazing if they find Eric, um, or there's just, you know, any information that is released, I will obviously come back and tell you guys about that. With that being said, I do have a phone number for you guys. Or actually, I have a couple. So, Detective Ross Cundiff, um, his phone number is 434-970-3373. Again, the detective's number is 434-970-3373. Or Anonymous Crime Stoppers line at 434-977-4000. Again, Anonymous Crime Stoppers is 434-977-4000. That is all I have for you guys on Sage's Sage's case, case. I don't know why I keep wanting to say cage. If you would like me to like do a part two with more of like the family side or like interviews that they've done, um, or just like more information, I can definitely dig a little bit more. But like I said, I wanted to keep this one to the bare bones. I can always go in and just include more stuff if you guys want like a part two, or if you're just okay with like an update later on. I'm totally fine with whatever. But let me know your thoughts down below. Um, what is your opinion on this? Do you think it's Eric? To me, personally, I definitely think he had something to do with it. I think 
I think maybe he thought like she was going to stand him up or something or something like that. And maybe they did eventually meet up and something happened. But I definitely think he likely has a hand in it somehow. Whether or not he actually did something to her, I think he knows something. And that is just why he like fell off the map. Because he, we've seen it in other cases, like the people of interest or whatever, they will agree to a polygraph, they'll agree to come in for questioning, whatever it is, and then like a day or so later, they will just fall off the map and you either won't find them again or you won't find them for like days, weeks, months. And it's been years at this point and he still has not been found. Obviously something could have happened to him, like always. Um, it's not crazy to think that something could have happened to him, but I think he probably made himself off the map because he's hiding something. So I definitely think Eric had something to do with it. Unfortunately, I do think that Sage might no longer be with us. It just wouldn't make sense that she wouldn't come to her family if she was able to. But we never know the actual circumstances. But hopefully uh, evidence will be brought forth that will break this case open. With that being said, let me know your thoughts down below and I will see you guys very soon. Thank you so much for listening to Sage's story and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys. Thank you.